Well, I've made a few of these in the past, these skulls, using this skull mold from Resin Crate and sold them as a paint-your-own skull at car fairs and places like that, and they've sold really well. But a lot of people have asked me, could I do a plinth as well to add to this so that they could buy both? And actually, I think that is a great idea. Only thing is, I 3D printed this from a file that I don't own. I can use it uh, and uh, is open source, but I can't then make a mold of it and sell it. So what I'm going to do today is test whether I can carve some resin cree into a plinth that is my own, add it to my skull mold and then make a mold from it and keep casting it lots of times. I'm going to use cardboard to make the molding box with because I think that's going to be the easiest thing to make it out of. And I'm going to be using the flaps off this cardboard box here that I got from Amazon. It was something arrived in it. I'm a bit addicted to Amazon to be perfectly honest. Thank goodness for all these people that buy me coffees because if not I'd never be able to buy myself anything that I'd go bust. So that's a little bit higher than what I want. So I'm going to make them all about the same height first. Before I build my box, all I'm doing is, now that I've got all my bits cut out, is just sealing them with some packing tape because resin crete is a wet product and I don't want that to damage the cardboard while it's curing. It's not going to take long to cure but obviously we want to avoid these little problems that could arise. So just covering it with some normal clear packing tape. I've also written on each of them what it is so I know whereabouts that goes. Because the last thing we want as well is for it to get wet and just collapse. So I've got my two sides. I've got my back and my front and I've got my bottom here. So just line those up on my table like that. And now I can quickly tape those together like this. Exactly the same way as I make pots for casting when I'm making a silicon mold for resin. Other than that is I use acetate. There we are. And then all I do is fold up my sides like that and then I can run tape all the way down those edges to ensure that I've got a good clean seal. And then once I've done it with the small tape, I will go over it again with the larger tape as well to make sure it's fully taped off. And this doesn't take long. It only took me about five minutes probably to make this whole casting box. So I've got my resin cream mixed up now and this is where we pour it in our mold and pray and hope that we did seal all the sides properly. I'm gonna just quickly tap these edges to ensure that they are not holding on to too many bubbles. Not that it's gonna matter because most of that is gonna be carved away. And now I'm gonna leave that to cure up for probably about half an hour before I take it out of its little mold. And it's not leaking anywhere, look, people. <laughs> Oh, tiny little bit there. Tiny little bit, but not out under. Well, this is all cured up now. I actually left it longer than half an hour because I was working on something else. I left it for about three quarters of an hour. And it should come out of this box fairly easily. And no mess was made during the making of this video so far, which is very unlike me. There we go. Ah, oh, it's a perfect size to be sculpting and crafting that out. I'm going to leave this now. I mean, it is lovely and soft now. And it will carve really easy at this point. But I'm actually going to leave this for the moment and let it dry overnight before I start to carve away at it. If I can leave it. I probably won't leave it because I can't help myself, but there. Well, this has been drying overnight now and it should be lovely and dry. First thing I'm going to do with it is mark on here roughly. I don't want this to be a perfect thing so it makes it look like it's it's machine made. I'm going to mark on here where my actual base for the whole thing will be and then also where the top relief is going to be. So this is going to be the top, going to be the bottom, right on them so I don't forget. And then before I do anything else I'm going to carve out all of this here to a depth of probably about half a centimeter. And I'm going to use a mixture of my knives and some of my carving tools. So first of all, I'm going to mark my lines on here so I know where I'm cutting to. Try not to cut my fingers off. Now, if I wanted these to be straight, I could use a ruler, but I don't. I want them to look a bit gnarly because it's going to hold a skull up. So now I've got my lines all cut, what I can start doing is carving into those lines to get rid of some of that. And that'll give me a base to work from and it is carving really easily. Now I could use the Dremel for this as well but 
I'm not going to. I want to take some bigger bits out. I can take some bigger bits out with my clay tools. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to dig all that out. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Well, I've carved that out now. So I've got a distinct top there and a distinct bottom. And now what I want to do is turn this into something that looks like quite distressed stone. And through actually trying it and digging this out, I found that this tool here is the best one for it. And all I'm doing is running along in lines and moving my chisel up and down as I go through. Carves really easy at this stage. And then chip some bits out of it as well, both ends. That looks really gnarly, like old stone bricks and things. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. All I'm going to do is go round all the sides like this. So there we go. So we've got that now looking quite gnarly and that side looking quite gnarly. Not sure how well the camera's picking it up. And the top here, that is going to be fairly smooth because the skull's going to be sitting on that anyway. So what I need to do is take a scraper and smooth this off. I don't mind if it's got a few marks in it because that would have a few marks in it anyway, but I don't want the word bottom in it, do I? And what I'll probably do is take this little gouging chisel here and put some marks in that so it's not looking quite so pristine. Yeah, quite like that. I'm not sure if the camera's picking them up again. There we go, at that sort of size. Let's clear some of this dust off. Now the underneath is not going to be seen, is it? So we don't really need to worry about that. I'll just smooth that out a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is, I think that one needs a corner knocked off it, like that. A bit gouged out of it there, so it looks like it's had its corner chipped off. I put a little plaque in, all I did was engrave that around in the top. So if people want to put something in there, they can, that says something. I think that's just a cute little thing. And now I'm going over and making sure there's no resin creek dust on this whatsoever now. Because the next stage is to seal this ready for the actual silicon. And all I'm using to seal it with is a gloss varnish. And the reason I'm using a gloss varnish is I may want to use this for a resin mould as well. And if I do, then it's already going to give me a glossy finish. Now, I did unfortunately contaminate my gloss varnish with some stain, but it doesn't matter because it's only relevant when I put it on a picture. Make sure you go over everywhere because anywhere you haven't gone over, then you're not going to get the same result afterwards. This is all dry now. It's had three coats of varnish and I've made up my little box. I made it up in exactly the same way as I made the first one to cast the actual resin creep block. And now I'm going to mix up my silicon. And I just need to make sure that I've got enough space around it that's equal, and there is. And now I can pour my silicon in. I'd like to pour my silicon in as slowly-ish, but there's gonna be a few bubbles in it. There is no doubt about that. But we can live with bubbles. I have no problems with that. Most of the bubbles will come to the top of this and actually sit on top. So they won't spoil the finished mould. As you can see, that little box is not leaking anywhere. I'm going to give it a little tap and allow those bubbles to come to the top. And then that will cure overnight. This particular silicon I'm using takes about 8 to 10 hours. This is all cured up now and ready to go. All I need to do is take it out of its little box. And there's our little block. Now we have got a bit of coverage on the base here, but I'm not too worried about that. That is quite common. Sometimes if things are very light, I will stick them down to the base and that kind of prevents that happening. But it's not a major issue. Just to cut this off. There we go. So we've got that all done. Pull our base out and that will have given us a perfect mold now i will give this a wash out before i use it just in case there's any flaky bits in it and then i'll cast in it and i'll show you what it looks like this i will put somewhere very very safe so that when this mold gets to the end of its life because they don't last forever then i can just make another one and carry on selling them i've got my resin cream mixed up now and all i need to do is pour that into this mold i'm going to give it a little tap once i've poured a First bit in, just in case there's any bubbles caught in those corners. So just a little bit of squidgy widgy there. And now fill it right up. So that's all filled up now. Now I know that I get two of these and two of these out of one kilogram of resin crete. And that cost me £20. So each set of these cost me £10 to make, plus my time, plus however much it costs to make the mould, which is, to be honest, is negligible because I will get probably 60 casts out of that mould before I have to make another one. So I'm not really too bothered about that. So the cost of these is £10 to make material-wise. To mix them, 
and to pour them is probably five minutes. So that's, I'm going to charge a pound for that. So that's 11 pounds. Then I have to have a bag to put them in, which I'll show you at the end and a little certificate. And I'll show you exactly how I cost this out and how much they're selling for at the moment, once that one's cast. But this should be cured now. It only took about 35 minutes. And the best way to release it is just release it all the way around and then open it up. But what we have got is a perfect casting of that. And that will sit on there really well, like that, and gives a great little finish. I think it does look good. I'm very, very pleased with that. And I can mould probably 10 of those in a day. Just have the mould in, then release them while I'm doing other things. So this is how I would pack this. I'll pack it in bubble wrap, each piece separately. I, I wouldn't put them together in one piece of bubble wrap. And then I pop them in a plastic bag. But along with that, I'll also add some information. And this is my information sheet. And I tend to do the same for most things. So I just have a little bit on here saying have fun and go wild and do it as you want to do. Acrylic paints work best on the these products which they do once you finish painting let it dry for 24 hours then give it a couple of coats of varnish like any pottery if you drop this it may break so always handle with care check out my website this is really important for other new and exciting projects like this that will be coming in the future I always put a little signature on it. I always put a little bit here saying dispose of packaging responsibly and keep away from young children and animals. And I pop that in the bag that way up so people can see it. It's good advertising and you get a lot of additional orders by providing that sort of stuff. I will sell that at a craft fair or somewhere like that for about £35. And when you think these hand moulding kits and they're not even done, cost £45, you're selling something at £35 and you, the equivalent in dollars or wherever you are, that is actually really good value. Now I could add more value to this by adding some paints and some brushes and some varnish and all that sort of stuff. But most crafters or people have got that. And if I find in the future that is a comment that comes back, then I may look at that and add those in there. I would then have to source those, price them in, and it might put the price of the kit up. But I'll see how this goes. Always about trying out new things and being different from everybody else at the craft fair. Boot that like button if you found this video to be really useful and has really sparked some ideas in you about other kits and things that you can put together and sell to make a bit of extra money. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any more of my videos. Be sure to check out the video that's coming up next. I think that will give you another really good idea on where you can make money and things that you can sell at craft fairs. Take care. Enjoy your crafting. Bye.